how can we do this? How can we figure out the maximum velocity of the sound source? Um, well, I'm going to help you out a little bit. A little bit. You guys are going to have to figure out the rest. So as this sound source is going in this circle, what I've done is I've placed a sensor. It's really my phone. It's got a great app on it, and it measures the changes in frequency relative to the sensor. Okay, So as the sound source, source is going around and around and around, the sensor will be able to catch higher and lower frequencies, and it's all due to this Doppler effect. Okay, So here's my first question for you. As this thing is going around and around and around, and you can see the arrow up there, that shows you that it's traveling counterclockwise. As this thing approaches point A, passes over the sensor, and then goes to point B, where will the greatest frequency be sensed? Is it going to be as the thing passes point A, or is it going to be as it passes point B? That's your first question, and I'm going to give you a second to figure that out. Okay, well hopefully you figured out that it should be at point A. The highest frequency should be as it's approaching the sensor. And really, the highest frequency will be right before it gets to the sensor. Okay, that will be the maximum velocity in relation to the sensor itself. You will have the lowest frequency measured just as it passes over the sensor. Okay, and this part of it's because it's this is traveling in a circle. Okay, so what I'm going to show you in a second here is that highest frequency measured just after it passes point A, and then the lowest frequency measured. All right, I, again, I used my app for this. Um, now I'm going to show you these numbers. To get the actual frequency of the sound source as if it were standing still, just in place, all you need to do is take a look at this maximum and the minimum right here. Take a look at the maximum on the left at A. Take a look at the minimum recorded at B. If you can find the center point, okay, if you can find the very center point here, you will find the actual frequency of the device. So, what is it? Okay, well, hopefully, you got something close to 2628, 2628 hertz. Okay, now, you guys should have access to your, um, to your Doppler equation. You get your F prime equaling F, and that's all times this V sub W minus V sub D. Well, guess what? That sensor, that is the detector, it is sitting still. That's your first hint. Second, V sub W. We are doing this in a room. It's at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so the speed of sound should be about 343 meters per second. I want you to solve for V sub S. All right, well now you should have gotten a V sub S of something approximating, the, ma the magnitude should be approximating something close to 4.7 meters per second. Awesome. If you got that, excellent job. Now, here is the bonus part of this. Could we, could we check this out? Could we check out that 4.7 meters per second in a different way. Could we confirm it? Could we, could, we, could we see just how close we got to what should be the correct answer? Well, this is going to take us back to first semester where we talked about uniform circular motion. And we talked about how to calculate the velocity of a thing going around in a circle. Okay, well, what have I given you here? I've given you the radius. All right, so I measured the length of the string. And so that's the radius, awesome. And the next thing that I did for you, I told you that this thing is completing five rotations in six seconds. Five rotations in six seconds. Well, what does that mean? What does that help us with? Hmm, it should help us calculate the period. So I'm gonna let you calculate the period because we've got our formula, right? V equals two pi r over t, over the period. So calculate the period for me real quick. All right, you should have gotten the period of about 1.2. Well, now remember the frequency is 5 over 6, 5 sixth. 5 cycles per 6 seconds. But I don't want the frequency, I want the period. 
the period is going to be six seconds to complete five cycles. Okay, and that's how you get 1.2. Now plug it into your equation, and what you should see is your velocity equals 2 pi r, 2 times pi times 0 0.9, divided by 1.2, and oh my gosh, you guys should see something miraculous. It comes out to about uh, 4.7 meters per second. Boom. We have just calculated the velocity of this thing using first semester technology, right, of, of V equals 2 pi r over t, uniform circular motion, and we also found a way to do it using the idea of Doppler. Fantastic. I hope you guys got something out of that.